What up, YouTube? Big Lou of Big Louise Coach Review, back again, and that's right, today I'm here to do a little video about DIY everything today. We're going to be DIYing coil building. That's right, we're going to be doing fused Claptons, all right? We're going to be doing stainless steel fused Claptons wrapped around a 3 millimeter driver. We're also going to be discussing e-liquid, how to make your own e-liquid at home. Now in the video, I'm not using nitro gloves or any safety gear or anything like that because I've been doing it for quite a while and I feel confident in my skills. But if you're just starting off making your e-liquid, please wear safety goggles, mouth restraints, nitro gloves, whatever. Wear whatever you can to protect yourself and the people around you. Be mindful that liquid nicotine is very, very strong when you purchase it in high milligram dosages. If it does touch your skin, you will get an instant headache. You, If in the event you do and it does touch your skin, absolutely drink cold water as fast as you can. Freezing cold water is the best thing to get rid of a nicotine headache, that's for sure. So if nic liquid nicotine comes in contact with your skin, wash it off you immediately and go immediately to drinking cold water. Ice cold water will take away any nicotine headache instantly. Now, in the video, I'm not wearing any gloves of any kind or any safety gear or safety goggles because I trust in what I do. And I didn't really purchase a really high milligram dosage of nicotine in the DIY video for e-liquid. I got 50 milligrams, which is high. It is high, but it's not 100 milligram nicotine. So I like using 50 milligram because if in the event it does touch my skin, I'll just wash it off and I'll be fine. 100 milligram dosage of nicotine, please be careful that you must absolutely wear nitro gloves. You must absolutely wear eyewear just in case e-liquid splashes up into your face. You don't want nicotine going in your eye because that'll be pretty brutal. Uh, so please be mindful of what you do. Keep safety and know and understand there's always a risk to doing anything or everything. So be safe. There's nothing wrong with wearing rubber gloves mixing your own e-liquid. There's nothing wrong with wearing glasses or maybe something to cover your mouth like a some sort of mouth filter like they wear in China with this coronavirus. You know, wear whatever. Just be protective, okay? Also, keep in mind, if you have liquid nicotine in your house, please put it at the highest possible shelf in a cupboard if you have children. Mark skulls and crossbones on it. Put it in a Ziploc bag in a box that's locked. This way, no one gets access to it except you. Do not leave it on the kitchen counter where your kid is sitting there eating his SpaghettiOs and smacking his hands everywhere and then bumps into the liquid nicotine and gets nicotine all over him. Be smart. Don't be stupid. Do, do things right. You love your kids. Protect your kids. That's all I'm going to say. So we're going to talk about DIY coil building, DIY e-liquid, Ohm's Law. Very, very important to know Ohm's Law. And there's not a lot of people that talk about Ohm's Law. People just say you need to know Ohm's Law, but nobody goes into instructing on how to understand Ohm's Law. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to give you uh, two graphs to look at. I'm going to show you an open circuit on how an open circuit works. I'm going to show you how voltage works, what voltage is, what amperage is, what's current, what's resistance, what's ohms. I'm going to show you everything. Okay, so you get a better understanding on how it works. It's very simple once you know the formulas and you know basic math. If you know how to multiply and you know how to divide or if you know how to use a calculator, you'll know and understand Ohm's Law. It's the basic principles. It's Algebra 101 for the vaping industry. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive up close and check out Ohm's Law right now. Now, what we're looking at here are two diagrams, two basic diagrams of Ohm's Law, okay, which coincide with vaping quite often, okay? Now, we're going to be looking at the left-hand side diagram because for mechanical tube mods, all you got is volts, amps, and ohms. That's pretty much the basic principles of a mechanical tube mod, okay? So... It's Algebra 101, basically. So if we look at the letter E, which represents voltage, okay, which voltage is the driving force, you know, it's like PSI in a water pipe, which voltage pushes the electricity through the wires. It's the driving force, okay? And I, which represent current, or amps, 
okay? Amps is basically the flow of electrons that flow through the circuit itself, okay? So it's a measurement of those electrons that are flowing through the circuit. And resistance, which is R, or in this situation, ohms, for us as vapors, we need to know what ohmage coil to stick in an RDA. Now, a lot of people are like, well, you know, all I know is I buy this coil and I stick it in the RDA and it works. But a lot of people don't know why and what it does, okay? Now, I'll show you what an open circuit looks like and a closed circuit looks like as well. But this is just an ABC of Algebra 101, okay? So, if you're trying to figure out what the voltage is uh, in a circuit, all you would need to do is multiply the current, which is amps, times the resistance, the ohms, and that equals voltage. If you're trying to figure out what the current is of a circuit, it's the um, it's going to be the voltage divided by the resistance, which is the ohms. So voltage divided by ohms will tell you the amps, okay? Or if you're trying to figure out what the resistance of a coil should be, it would be the voltage divided by the amperage will tell you what ohm coil to be using, okay? Now, I know this is a little confusing to some people, but this is a good way of figuring things out, okay? Now, here's another diagram to illustrate Ohm's Law. This time, voltage is represented by the letter V. Current, or amperage, is represented by the letter I. And resistance, which is ohms, represented by the letter R. If this is more visually uh, appealing to certain people. So, picture this being a mechanical tube mod with an RDA on top, okay? These two lines to the right that are perpendicular to these vertical lines, these two lines right here represent the battery. And right now, the way it looks, because they're not connected, it means it's an open circuit. Meaning, if you had your RDA sitting with a battery inside of a mechanical tube mod, but the button is not being pushed, then this represents a mechanical tube mod with a mechanical tube mod, with an RDA, with a coil in it, and a battery inside the mechanical mod, but no one's firing the button. So this is considered an open circuit. When you close the circuit, it means pushing the button in, completing a circuit that travels in circumference it goes out and then returns goes out and then returns so what happens is when you push the button of a mechanical tube mod the voltage is the driving force that so you're sending 4.2 volts out it goes through this line and then hits the coil which is this zigzag line over here this is the coil what the coil is designed to do it's designed to slow down the process of voltage okay it slows down and it reduces the amount of amperage in that voltage okay that's what resistance does it resists these electrons that are moving at lightning speed through the circuit line okay so the massive amounts of amps and voltage that's traveling through this coil now this coil is designed to slow down okay that's what resistance is it resists the flow of electrons and amperage and reduces okay so it takes a lot of power to basically if you have a high resistant coil it takes a lot of power to get it glowing red right so if i let's say i put a 4.2 volt battery in a mechanical tube mod a single 18650 and i put a 0 0.70 ohm coil in an RDA and I go to hit the button, the, the coil probably doesn't even glow because there's not enough voltage 
in 4.2 volts to heat up a 0.70 ohm coil. You follow me? So you would need a lower resistance in order to get your coil glowing. So, but at the same time, you have to be safe because our battery is only a 30 amp drain battery if we're talking about Sony VTC4s or Sony VTC5s. They're 30 amp drain batteries. But if you had a Samsung 25R battery, those are only 20 amps. So you have to keep in mind the way this works is if you're sending full power out at 4.2 volts and then it hits the coil, it can't be too low of an ohmage because the battery is not designed to receive on the receiving end. Once you send the current out one way, and then it comes through the coil, and then on the return to the battery, it can't exceed higher than 30 amps. All right? You have to understand that. So voltage is the driving force that's pushing the electrons through the circuit, and what that amount of electrons is based on is is what you call the amperage the total amount of electrons flowing through that circuit the calculated amount of electrons going through that circuit is the amperage okay so voltage is the driving force it pushes the electrons through the circuit and then it hits the coil which is going to slow down that current it's going to slow down that voltage that's trying to push through a coil. Now, the higher the resistance, the harder that battery has to work to push it through the coil faster, okay? So what happens is, is the reason why coils glow is because there's resistance in the coil and it builds up heat energy, which in then will make your coil glow, okay? And it'll get it red hot. And then by the time it's done coming out of your coil, the electricity, it's going to flow back into your battery on the opposite end. So up top, it flows out, positive-wise, hits your coil. Then on the return through the negative, it hits your battery. Now, the amperage has to be lower than the recommended drainage of your amp. So if you have a high amperage drain battery, like the Sony VTC4 or 5, then it has a 30 amp high drain. You understand? You follow? 30 amp high drain, which will then mean that you're receiving the amperage in return and it has to coincide with the battery. Okay, that's why mechanical mods are important because you can't build too low of an of a resistor or an ohms coil. It can't be too low because the receiving amperage that goes back into the battery has to meet within the drainage. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but... I'll show you on a calculator now how it works. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about Ohm's Law Calculator and how it works and how your battery works and how to make sense of this, okay? A lot of people don't explain these things in this vaping world today, and I really feel it's important everybody should know this. I have a tendency to push the limits of my battery, which makes me a risk taker. But for the average person out there who doesn't vape like me and they're just people looking to transition into vaping and all they have is mechanical tube mods and RDAs left at their disposal, well, let me show you what you can do, okay? Visually, let me show you what happens here. If I have a Sony 30 amp high drain battery, okay, I know it sends out 4.2 volts and then when on the return, it receives, it has to receive 30 amps or less in amperage so how do you send 4.2 volts out because you can't you can send 4.2 volts out but it cannot return at 4.2 volts because the battery cannot handle that type of high level of amperage rushing out of the battery and rushing right back in the battery wasn't designed for that okay it's designed to push 4.2 volts out there but it's not designed to receive 4.2 volts because then the battery, as it send, just as fast as it's sending, it's receiving. And then you could overload your battery and your battery will explode. So once, once it sends 4.2 volts of electricity out, you need something to slow down the flow, to minimize the pressure. Remember, voltage is the driving force. 
that's pushing electrons through the wire, okay? A coil is the resistor, which what a resistor does is it's going to slow down the flow of electrons moving through a circuit, okay? So meaning, if I use a very thick gauge wire and do very little wraps, well, I'm not really doing anything to slow down this flow of electrons, this push, this pressure of this voltage, okay? So that means the voltage is going to hit my coil at, let's say, a 0 0.60 ohm, and then, uh, no, not even, a 0 0.06 ohm, let's say, 0 0.06 ohms, which is like dangerous, you know, that's very dangerous. So you don't want to be at that low resistance. If my battery is 30 amp drain, then the maximum amount of amperage that I could have coming back to my battery after it's hit a coil has to be 30 amps or less, okay? This way you're not overloading the battery to make it explode. So in a calculation here on this calculator, I'll show you right now. So if you have 4.2 volts, the pressure of the flow of electrons going through the circuit, and then it's going to hit my coil head, my atomizer, it's going to hit my coil head that's it's the one element that's going to heat up. The way it heats up is that the coil is supposed to bottleneck that flow of electricity going through the wire. It's almost like putting a chokehold on that wire. So you got all this pressure rushing into a resistor and the resistor's designed to break down and lower the amount of amperage flowing through that wire, okay? So 4.2 volts, boom, hits the coil. Now, if I have a very thick gauged wire, the electricity is not going to be bottlenecked. It's just going to flow through that wire really quick because it's got all that surface area for the electricity to travel through the coil. But now if I use, let's say, uh, a thick gauge wire to send the voltage out there, and then I send that thick gauge wire connecting to a minuscule hair-like wire, a very, very thin, thin wire, what's going to happen is, is right where it goes from thick wire to thin wire, it's going to bottleneck. Because now you got all this driving force of electrons rushing through this thick wire, and then boom, it stops and gets hit by a little wire. And then there's many, many wraps of this tiny, thin wire going in circumference in a coil. And then what happens is that wire is going to get hot because that's what it does. You have all this resistance. It's resisting all this current. So what's going to happen is that electricity is going to make that coil glow bright and red. And by the time it comes out that coil, it's going to be at a lower amperage because most of the energy was resisted by your coil. And by the time it returns back to the battery, it's in lesser amperage. So if I have a 30 amp high drain battery, it's sending 4.2 volts of current out there. And if I have it hit a 0 0.25 ohm coil and I hit calculate, that's going to tell me I'm going to have 16.8 amps of current coming back to my high drain 30 amp battery. So that means my battery is going to be able to handle receiving 16.8 amps. And that means I will be vaping at 70.56 watts. That is the maximum amount of wattage for the 0.25 ohm coil, okay, with a 30 amp high drain battery. Does this set in? Does this make sense? So let's say we were using a series stacked mechanical tube mod. That's at 8.4 volts. So what happens now is now we have a much greater driving force. We have a whole lot of pressure, twice the amount of what a single 18650 battery does, right? 8.4 8 volts. So now we have to be at like, you know, you have to basically double what you were at 4.2 volts. Because if I have two 30 amp drain batteries, just because I have two batteries doesn't mean I have 60 amps of drain. No, it still means I have 30 amps of drain, okay? The only thing that gets multiplied twice in a series stacked battery formation is the voltage. So you have two 4.2 volt batteries, then at that point you have 8.4 volts because they're stacked one on top of the other. So you're 
multiplying the voltage. So now you have a greater deal of voltage, but now you need a bigger coil head because now you're not working with 4.2 volts anymore, but you're still working with 30 amps. So you need to have a bigger resistor to slow down the flow of electricity, to slow down all that driving force of pressure and have it go back into the battery at lesser amperage. So, in this case at 8.4 volts, if I put a coil in there at 0 0.50 ohms, so 0 0.50 ohms, and I hit calculate, that means I'm at 16.8 amps, but 141 watts. So I'll, instead of vaping at the lower wattage that I was before, now I'm at a much higher wattage, but I have just the right coil head in there at 0 0.50 ohms, okay? Now, if let's say I don't do 0 0.50, right? Let's say I do something stupid and I'm on a series device and I decide to, I decide to do 0 0.25 ohms at 8.4 volts. Well, if I hit calculate, I'm at 33.6 amps of current that's flowing back into the battery which also means i'm vaping at 282 watts which means that battery is only designed to receive 30 amps on the return it's got a high drain of 30 amps the sony vtcs so if amperage is coming back higher than the recommended amount then now you're starting to overload your battery and your battery will begin to get hot which will lead to a venting or thermal runaway. And let's just say, let's just keep going. The more dangerous ohm builds would be, let's just say, let's say you're using a 0.15 ohm. Oh, I put a comma in there. So it would have to be a 0. Point. So here we go. 8.4 volts at 0. 0.15 ohms of resistance, which is hardly any resistance at all. So you get all this pressure hitting this coil that doesn't have that much resistance. So that means my amperage is going to be through the roof now. So if I hit calculate, that means I have 56 amps of electrons coming through the wire on the return to the battery. And it means I'm vaping at 470 watts which most people cannot handle being over 250 watts, much less 300 watts. But in this situation, at 8.4 volts of current going, uh, 8.4 volts of pressure that's going through the flow of electricity through the wire that hits your resistor at 0 0.15, it hits your coil at 0 0.15 ohms, that means you have 56 amps. So at this point, your batteries have blown up in your hand, and now you have no hand or body parts. So you have to play it smart. If you're at 8.4 volts, you need to be at a much higher resistance. So you need to be at at least 0 0.40 ohms of resistance you need to be. That's the minimum, 0 0.40. And now you'll be at 21 amp return back to your battery. If you have a 30 amp drain battery, you're okay. If you want to see just a little bit more at 0 0.30, let's try 0 0.30. Let's see the difference in amperage now. 28 amps. So the minimum required of resistance for a 30 amp high drain battery would mean that you would need a 0 0.30 ohm coil for that current to hit your coil, for that flow of electricity to hit your coil and to be slowed down, you need a 0 0.30 ohm build. So you can have 28 amps of, of amperage returning back to your battery that's only a 30 amp drain. Does this make sense to anybody? First and foremost, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a coil, right? Now, for those of you who have been vaping in the last five, four or five years, Maybe you've come across coil builds such as fused Clapton's and, you know, the average person out there is like, oh my God, how am I going to make this fused Clapton? I don't even know where to begin. And yeah, there's instructional videos out there done by professional coil builders, but they're not really meant or designed for the person who's just starting off. They're really meant for guys that have already been building coils. So I'm going to make an instructional video on how to do that or just a very basic 
Fuse Clapton setup. Which means if I can do it, a guy who's 45 going on 46, you can definitely do it. All right. It's not because I'm in the industry and it's not because I've been vaping forever. It's because it's that simple. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what kind of wire I vape on. I vape with stainless steel wire. You can pick this up online anywhere. Pretty much just look up on Amazon stainless steel wire 24 gauge right you can get any feet this is a hundred foot spool of stainless steel wire okay and it comes rolled up in this plastic uh this plastic uh whatever the hell this thing is this spool okay and it's going to be very springy it's going to have a lot of springiness to it it's going to look like this basically very springy now this wire is about my arm's length reach from fingertip to fingertip spread out this way, okay? The reason why I have it like this is simply because I need that much length because this is gonna be bent in half to only make roughly about that length in parallel wire. Now, what's parallel wire? It's one wire next to another perfectly next to each other like that. So I'm going to show you how we get to that basically. But the first things first I have to do is I have to straighten out this wire because it's very springy and you can see it's just like a spring. That's what we mean by springy. It's very jumpy and there's not much you can do to work with this wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this end right here to a cabinet handle, a door handle, or whatever, and this end to a drill. And then we're going to straighten it out by attaching it to the drill and spinning the drill. When you spin the drill, it twists the metal in circumference, and then it'll straighten out the wire, okay? And that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to straighten out the wire as best as possible and lose this springiness. So right now I'm going to, I'm going to attach this end to my refrigerator door handle. So I'm just gonna twist, gonna you know feed it through and then twist it around. Very simple, you know. And then gonna take my length, straighten it out, and attach the other end to a drill. Okay, so I'm using a, a corded drill because it has a high revolutions. I mean, you could get a cordless drill, it doesn't matter. But you want to feed the end of your wire into the drill chuck, tighten it up, give a little tension to the wire, and then spin it. Now I'm going to put it in the reverse direction to take, because now that I spun it in one direction, I'm going to spin it in the other direction slightly to take out any springiness that it may have once there's tension of it becoming straightened. So now I'm going to disconnect the chuck. And now my wire is perfectly straight. There's no springiness. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to take my wire snips and cut the opposite end where I've tied onto my refrigerator door handle. Okay, so now that I've straightened out my wire, it is pin straight. And what I like to do is I like to find the center of the length of this whole wire in general. So what I'll do is I'll bring both ends of the wire together and it forms this teardrop. As you can see, it looks like a teardrop. I'm going to take a rod, place it in the wire loop itself and just pull down. And that's going to find my center of the wire. And now I'll take my wire snips and I will cut right in the center of that loop. So when I make these wires parallel to each other, when they're side by side, they're the same exact length now. That's how we get the length. So now they're exactly the same length and I'm just going to cut off the tips eventually because I have a little kink from the loop on one end and then the other end being in a drill chuck but I'm gonna lay them flat on my table now now when I build coils 
it's very simple. I use this little C clamp, right? It's a little C clamp, which it has a little, you know, little screw on it. You turn to tighten up your clamp and then attached to it. I got this little fisherman's lore type of spinning chain thing. Okay. Now I'm not a fisherman, but most people who fish know what this is. And if you don't know what it is, go to a bait and tackle store and you'll see this thing. And it's just basically a link with it almost feels like there's a ball bearing on the opposite end. It's got a little chain link loop on the bottom of it, which we're going to be passing one side of the two wires and then hooking into it. So I'm going to go up close and show you how this is done. First, I'm going to attach my clamp to my table. Now change camera position to show you what this looks like. So as you can see, I got my chain link here with my C clamp attached to my table. And the height of this can be, what I like about this is once you hook this link on to your clamp, you can actually change the height of depending how high your drill sits off a table. But for now, I'm not worried about the height. I'm just gonna simply snake through my two ends of my straightened wire through this bottom link and then tie it off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it through and then I'm going to bend it and make a hook. So it hooks on. And now I'm going to take that hook and wrap it around. So I know my wire will not slip through this loop. So I'm just going to bend that back. And there we have it. Now I know it's on there nice and tight. Now for the opposite end, I like to take the two ends and pull on them tight and then bend the wire over on itself. So this way the chuck has something to grab onto when it comes to two wires. And then I will attempt to wrapping that wire around on itself. So as you see here, the wire is wrapped around on itself. I got good tension in my wire keeping the wires parallel. I want to make sure that my wire is dead center on my chuck also. So I'm just going to readjust and make sure this goes on dead center. So if you see there, my wire is dead center on the chuck. But I want to keep tension in my two wires and slide my fingers closest to the chuck to make sure my wires are still parallel. So once it gets a good grip, I'm going to tighten up my chuck on my drill to make sure and guarantee it's not going anywhere. Okay. So currently there's a little gap between the two that means the wire on one side is tighter than the opposite side it's not going to cause any issues for me but I like having that little space there anyway and I'll show you why now this is pretty much the easiest instruction I can give anybody on how to do this this little nylon cord wrapped around the spool of wire this is called a beetalon okay now what it does is it holds the spool together and has a little hole on it where you can snake your wire through so the whole spool of wire does not become unspooled. And I use this in my clapping building to make my life a little easier. So what I'll do is I'll snake the wire coming through that little hole in between my two coil legs between my wires. Okay, so currently I have the wire fed through and I'm just going to, I'm just going to spin this. Just so it captures the wire on it. Okay, so now what's interesting is 
Once I start spinning this, this coil reel is just going to spin on its own and it's going to feed itself down the wire. So all I have to do is just maintain pressure on my drill to take out the slack on the wire and then feed, uh, hit the throttle on the drill very slowly and it'll do all the work for me. So we've got our finished product here, the wire itself. Now, I have a couple twists in mind. You're gonna notice that there's a couple twists in it, which you could just take two pliers, one here, one there, and twist opposite ends of each other to straighten out the wire if you like. Um, I usually, what I'll do is I'll put one end in a drill and hold the other end on a plier and then spin in the opposite direction I was initially spinning and that'll straighten out the wire. It'll do as best as it can to get it, but this is just a little afterplay. You gotta take one plier here, and then another one there, and then twist the opposite ways. And then you can straighten out the wire and get the kinks out. But for this video, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just simply gonna cut maybe a three inch, possibly two and a half to three inch length, and that I know will be enough for five wraps around a three millimeter device, uh, a three millimeter driver. So right now, I'm gonna cut a length overall about six inches. That's about six inches. And then about half of that is gonna be about three inches. So I'm guessing around there. That looks like it's centered basically. Not bad. So now I'm going to take my rods and I'm going to wrap a coil around a three millimeter. Now this is a coil master coil jig. Uh, it comes with different size rods. This one is about a three millimeter rod and it's my most favorite rod to use in any type of coil building. I'm going to put my coil stick perpendicular to the rod and place it on top put my thumb over it with really strong pressure basically, a lot of pressure. And I'm gonna bend my wire around this rod. Now as you're doing this, this gets a little tricky. You gotta pinch with your thumb and index finger on the wire that you bent and then wrap your coil around because now you gotta wrap it around and have it go next to the other wire. So this way you can have it side by side. Now this is the third wrap, this is the fourth wrap, and this is the fifth wrap. Now this takes a little practice because this wire, it's got a lot of tension on it. Because you've got to remember there's two wires in there, and now it's wrapped around a 40 gauge wire. So there's a lot of tension. I'm going to go ahead and bend my coil leg. I'm going to go ahead and bend my coil leg to make it parallel to the opposite side coil leg. So you need a needle nose plier to do this basically. And do this again. I'm going to do it a little quicker this time. That's two wraps. Three. Four and then five. Okay, five wraps right there. Very nice. 
Hey, I have it. Two coils, five wraps around a three millimeter. This is a fused 24 gauge stainless steel Clapton wrapped in Nichrome 80 40 gauge wire. Very nicely done. Now the RDA of choice today I'm using is the Dang RDA. This is the Ultim version. This was put out by Ownboy OC. And I believe Twisted Messes as well. So yes, Twisted Messes and Ownboy OC. I've released this RDA and uh, it's probably one of the easiest rebuildable dripping atomizers you could use to build a coil with. The Probably the easiest one out there today. So it comes with instructions, which is nice. So for the newbies out there that need instructions, it does come with instructions and tells you how to use it. It's in Dutch and Netherlands and English. Yep. And French and, you know, it's got all these different languages basically for you to understand how to use this device, which it's basically common sense and pretty easy. Also tells you do not over tighten post screws. That's a warning sign they give you. Do not over tighten. Nothing on the opposite end. And they also have Aug Vape warranty card. And there is your warranty card. And then you just write your batch code on there. And you can send this into Aug Vape. And touch base with them say hey I bought a dang RDA and I'm having problems you know whatever your issues may be there shouldn't be any problems at all though get a little silica pouch to retain moisture and then we have our Ultim top cap with adjustable airflow so you got a lot of different stages of airflow on here for dual coil now this is for only dual coil setup not single coil so you can see that you have a lot of different options for the airflow. Outer airflow control cap. It's got this honeycomb styled airflow on it. So you've got what? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten air holes there on top of another. And when you put your airflow control on it, you could adjust whether you want the bottom row or the top row or if you want to adjust it by two, four, six, eight, ten airflows. It's nice to have configurations like this with different options of airflow because some people like to have more of a restrictive draw, some people like an airier draw. Looking at the building deck itself you have a allen screw here, you have an allen screw here, underneath you have a Phillips head and a Phillips head screw at the bottom of the building deck itself to hold the posts in place. And then you have your 510 pin here, which I happen to have my squonk pin ready in there for when I use this for squonking. But just to show you how this design works, you have one screw here. It's an Allen screw. And as you tighten your Allen screw, it'll clamp down like a vise. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but this works like a vise. So you have positive one side, negative on the other. Positive one side, negative on the other. So when you install your coils, all you have to do is install your coil legs in there, drop them in there, and just clamp it down. It's that simple. It can't get any hard. It can't get any easier than that at all. So in order to put this coil in this RDA, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to cut my coil legs exactly the same height so I got this coil leg length cutter tool here and I'm gonna bring it to four millimeters I'm just gonna have a four millimeter coil leg here and I'm gonna slide my coil legs through it and when I cut it they're gonna be the same exact length so I'm gonna do that now so four millimeter Four millimeter. So the rest is pretty easy. You just basically take your coil legs and drop them into the RDA and then tighten up your co RDA coil clamps. So drop those in, feed them by hand, line them up, even space on both sides so you know you're getting the positive end and you're getting the negative end. 
tighten up your coil. There we go. That's one side. That's one side done. See how easy this is? This takes seconds to do this. Feed that in there. Tighten up the screw. Probably the easiest deck to put an RDA together. I mean this these coils are in this deck. They're in there evenly. They're at the nice height. I got them cut to four millimeters on both sides, the coil legs, and that's it. Now all that's left to do is heating up the coils, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So I just placed my coils on my RDA, and now I'm going to be like what we call strumming the coil to, so it glows evenly. What you want it to do is you want it to glow from the inside out. So it's going to glow from the inside and spread out to the left and right on both coils. Just going to straighten out this coil real quick. Just pull it to the center slightly. Same with this one. Pull it to the center slightly. Okay. And now we're going to heat up these coils. So I'm just going to pull slightly. I'm going to hit the trigger on this mechanical mods slightly. I'm going to strum. I'm just going to strum away like I'm playing a guitar strumming. As you can see, we're glowing from the inside out. Oh, got some hot spots, so it'll when it cool off, it'll glow unevenly, so you got to make them glow evenly again. So you just got to strum a coil over and over again until they glow evenly. And there you have it. There we go. Okay, so when I use uh, wicking material, we use cotton. Why do we use cotton? Because cotton's cleanest and cotton retains the flavor best on our RDAs. So, I'm using three millimeter cotton. Now this is a company called Quickwick. It's a three millimeter inner diameter for three millimeter in, inner diameter coils, meaning this coil rod is three millimeters in diameter. So this cotton will fit through my coil easily and it'll be the easiest installing cotton in the world and you get it in this refill pack. So you get it in a pack and it's actually really, really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Okay, I'm gonna pull out two cotton wicks. This is how easy this has become. Now, this cotton comes with like this shoestring plastic sleeve on it. And you don't wanna slide it through your coils while your coil is still hot or else you'll melt that plastic on your coil, then you'll be breathing in plastic. So that's a big no-no. So all you wanna do is just slide the wick through your coil, pull off this plastic sleeve, and then pull the cotton through. Now what I like to do is I like to fluff my cotton and center it. So right now I'm centering it and I'm just gonna fluff my cotton real quick. But before I do, I'm gonna cut a little length off of it, which I feel like this is just too much cotton. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit off. I'm gonna make little bow ties. There we go, got a little bow tie. So I got rid of the excess and now I'm just gonna fan out my cotton and then once you fan it out a bit you could just jam the cotton into the RDA Now, I'm going to take a little DIY e-liquid and throw it on there today. 
So I'm gonna throw on my strawberry taro dragon fruit milk and throw that on here. It's a very strong taro Filipino potato mixed with a ripe strawberry and a milky flavor to it. It's very, very good. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, excellent. Put my cap on. There we go. Excellent. Adjust my airflow. Nice restrictive draw, and I'm happy. Hmm. So that was pretty much the coil build for fused Claptons, okay? Now, if you check out any of my earlier videos, like years ago, years ago, on how to do coil builds, you could do coil builds with just using the wire itself wrapped around that coil rotting tool, that coil master uh, coil jig. You could just wrap it around yourself and that makes life easier for you as well. You don't have to go into the whole clapped in style build. But if you're used to that sort of thing and you're used to buying pre-made coils online, well, eventually, sooner or later, pre-made coils won't exist online anymore because our government's gonna make it harder and harder for us to obtain product. So it's good to have this stuff on the back burner just in case you wanna continue vaping and not go back to smoking. Guys, so I'm on a website called Liquid Nicotine Wholesalers, okay? LiquidNicotineWholesalers.com. Now, if you don't have any DIY products, this is a site you can go to. And I'm not promoting this site. You can go to any actual site out there. You just got to Google it. But this is the first one that popped up as number one on Google search. So because it was the first one on Google search, I feel like it's a trusted source. Okay. So you can go elsewhere. You can go to liquidbarn.com. You can go pretty much anywhere to get e-liquid. You know, you don't you don't have to go to this site. I'm just showing you this site because it's the first one that popped up on Google search. Now, if you need liquid nicotine, just go to liquid nicotine and click on liquid nicotine and it'll show you here. Pure nicotine liquid gives you everything based uh, everything based on it and then you can see you have different types of liquid nicotine. One milligram, two milligram, three milligrams, six milligram. You know, these are going to work their way up to 60 to 100 milligram. Shoot, they even have 250 milligram nicotine liquid. But I advise you 1000% do not use 250 milligram nicotine liquid. The max I would suggest anybody go to is 100 milligram. Okay, and then you could always break it down with the flavors and vegetable glycerin. But there's no need whatsoever to go to 250 milligram nicotine. That is just insane. Okay, they, they actually have a little kit here for 24 bucks. Okay, so if you, so if you select this, you go here, it gives you all different things. You can see it comes with syringes, bottles, nicotine, uh, vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol for $24.99, which I don't think is a bad thing. If you want nicotine salts, you can get nicotine salts. You want to get flavorless e-juice, meaning vegetable glycerin or propylene glycol, you can go there. If you need to get e-juice flavorings, they have flavorings on here, okay? They have Chef Monster, they have uh, Ted Bacco, I don't know, they got all these wonky names for these things, okay? Or if you need DIY flavors, they have Capella, Flavor Apprentice, Flavor Art, Flavor West, Flavora, uh, LNW. I don't know who LNW is, but, you know, they have them too. They have all sorts of supplies, bottles, measuring syringes, graduated cylinders, digital scales. If you need a digital scale, look right here. They have a digital scale right here. You want to buy one that you can zero out? Hey, let's check out scales. Okay, 500 gram uh, yeah, they have an e-liquid mixer. Look at that little hand mixer. They have this 3000G 
digital scale. I'd probably get that one. That one looks pretty cool. Only 10 bucks, you know, 10, 11 bucks. This one's a 500 gram digital scale. You can get that one also. Get whatever you like, you know, but at least they have it on this site. And then they have a DIY calculator and then they also have a clearance section as well. So just Google e-liquid calculator or e-liquid supplies and you'll find it and it's out there. So if you're gonna start off making e-liquid, you wanna be able to know how much nicotine and how many grams you're gonna be using and how, you know what are the calculations? How does one figure out? How does one take 50 milligram nicotine and turn it into a three or four milligram nicotine? Uh, in the video, I show you make, me making four milligram, but I'm gonna go ahead and show the three milligram because that's pretty much the norm out there. So you don't have to do what I do. You can customize this any which way you want in the event of later on down the line if you're gonna be doing this DIY e-liquid, okay? So I'm gonna concentrate in the number one box, which is e-liquid amounts. And it says amount to make. And I have 100 milliliters is the amount of e-liquid I'm making for this video. It says desired strength. It says three milligram and water, vodka, or PGA. Now water, vodka, and PGA, that's, that's stuff people would use back in the day. Some people would use vodka as a flavor enhancer. Some people would use water. Some people use propylene glycol. I'm not adding any propylene glycol. I'm not adding any vodka, much less any water to this mixture. Uh, those are people that were looking back in the days to have a 50-50 um, e-liquid, meaning 50% VG and the other 50 would be water, vodka, or PGA, propylene glycol. Now, I'm not using those. I'm going for a max VG. So as you can see, there's a little blue check mark in, or the box is checked where it says max VG. Now, if we look at the nicotine base solution, which is box number two, we have nicotine strength well that's the actual strength of the nicotine that i'm using it's 50 milligram nicotine and of the content of that nicotine the base of that nicotine is vg i bought vg content of nicotine and it's a hundred percent vg meaning there's no propylene glycol in the nicotine itself. It is just nicotine and vegetable glycerin, and that's it. Now, if we look at box three, we have a total of four flavors all together. We have ripe strawberry from the Flavor Apprentice, and I'm using 10%, which ripe strawberry is a very pungent, strong strawberry smell and taste, but over time, while it's mixing with other liquids, it has a tendency to die down. That's why I'm using 10%. Some people would only recommend using maybe 6% or 5% of ripe strawberry and then having down all these other flavors that I'm doing here. But I like to vape uh, my juice quick and I like to vape it maybe within two or three days after making it. So. This way, no one understands. When you make liquid, you can't just vape it right off the bat. You have to let it sit for like three or four days before you vape it. You have to give it time to steep and mix and blend and marry. All the aromas have to marry to themselves together to make one concoction. So in this video, ripe strawberry from the Flavor Apprentice at 10%. Then we have sweet strawberry from the Flavor Apprentice at 4%. I got whipped cream that I'm going to be using in this video at 5% and Bavarian cream at 1%. Now Bavarian cream, it's kind of a, like a nuttier flavor. It gives it like some volume to the cream. It's almost like a cream booster. I'm only using 5% cream in this mixture. So Bavarian cream, that small 1% will give it that little extra push and punch. Now if I scroll down, it will tell me exactly what I need to do here. 
All right. Now, if you're not mixing in grams and you don't have a scale, you could easily use milliliters. So here it's saying the base milligram of 50 milligram nicotine, that's my nicotine base that I'm using. It says only to use six milliliters of that nicotine. Okay. And if I'm using grams, it's 7.57 grams. Now, the VG content of the actual VG that I'm using, the vegetable glycerin, it says 74 milliliters of vegetable glycerin or 93.32 grams, okay, or 74%, okay. Now, ripe strawberry, it's 10 all across the board. Now, all these numbers are going to be the same because I'm only making 100 milliliters of this liquid, so because it's 100 milliliters, it's a very even number. So ripe strawberry is only 10 mils or 10 grams. Sweet strawberry, 4 mils or 4 grams. Cream, 5 mils or 5 grams. Bavarian cream, 1 milliliter or 1 gram. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go out to my scale and start mixing this juice and I'll show you how to do it okay so next thing on the agenda is DIY e-liquid now there's a lot of safety that you should do in using this uh, I'm not currently wearing it because I don't have a nicotine potent enough to that'll harm me uh, but today I'll be using 50 milligram nicotine DX Bavarian cream flavor sweet strawberry flavor ripe strawberry flavor and whipped cream flavor okay so i'm going to be making like a strawberry whipped cream type of flavor it's it's a pretty light flavor uh not so heavy in the cream scenario but it's going to have a nice good strawberry taste to it okay and we're going to make it at roughly around four milligram nicotine okay now the vg nicotine i buy is at nick vape that's n-i-c-v-a-p-e i bought the 50 milligram dosage and this is 250 milliliters of 50 milligram nicotine dosage now this is not something you want around by your children or with around children's reach. So please be a responsible parent and don't be stupid and leave this out for your kids to play with. If you can, draw a skull and crossbones on it. You know, make it seem scary to them. Make sure they don't go anywhere near this, okay? Uh, be smart. Be a responsible parent. It's so amazing how stupid some people could be sometimes, okay? So... Uh, 50 milligram dosage. You don't have to get 50. You can get 20. You can get 10 milligram dosage. Okay. It's just 10 milligram dosage or 20 milligram dosage nicotine. You would require a bigger bottle of nicotine. I got 50 at 200 milliliters simply because I don't require a lot of nicotine out of this bottle to make three milligram nicotine. So I'll buy a small bottle like this, keep it for a couple years and then throw it out once I'm done. Okay, now uh, this this recipe is going to be done real simple, real easy. It's real easy, and I'll explain it to you. All right, so we have a scale here, and this scale is a U.S. Balance U.S. Benchtop Pro. It weighs in grams, so we're going to be doing everything in grams. And what I like about this scale is that it has a zero on it, meaning. Once I turn on my scale and I put my glass beaker on top of it, that measures weight. And I don't want to use the weight of this in my formula for e-liquid making. So what I do is I hit the zero button and the zero button cancels out this weight of this beaker on here. So every time I add a flavor in here, I'll zero it out once I have the recommended grams, okay? So I'm going to keep this real simple and real easy. I'm going to just, and I'll change camera angles so you can see what I'm doing to make life easy. I'm also going to be utilizing syringes, little plastic disposable syringes, which are also washable. You can wash them out if you need it be. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and get into mixing so you can understand and see, and I'll explain everything, okay? Now, you don't have to actually use this, this beaker. You can actually use the bottle that you're going to be putting the juice in. Now, this was a Strawberry Crunch by Tailored House. I washed it thoroughly in and out with steaming and boiling hot water. So it took out all the flavor residue out of any flavors. And now it's just a plastic bottle, has no scent to it. So I'm going to be use, utilizing this. This way, whatever I'm mixing is going directly into my bottle and not transferring from a beaker to there. But if you're doing larger dose quantities, this has a little scale on it. These scales are never correct. They're kind of like ballpark figure as to what's really going in there. So don't use this as an actual scale. They're never really that correct. So first things first, I turn on my scale basically, all right? And I like to zero it out. Even though there's nothing on it, I like to zero it out. By zeroing it out, I feel and know that I have 0.0, .0 grams measured here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my empty juice bottle up top, and that comes in at 13.2 grams. So I'm going to zero that out. So now it's weighing zero grams whatsoever, although there is a bottle up top on here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and mix my, I'm gonna put my nicotine in here first cause I like putting the nicotine in first. So as I add in flavors, the flavors are mixing with the nicotine thoroughly. Okay, so this is 50 milligram and it requires 9.9 .9 grams. So I'm just going to go ahead and start pouring slowly in here my nicotine. Now it's 9.9 .9 grams based on a 100 milliliter bottle. That's what this is, a 100 milliliter bottle. So I slowly pour, slowly, slowly pour till I get 9.9. .9. There we go. We're good. So, close my cap, put my nicotine aside where no one's going to touch it and no one's going to get harmed by it. It has a childproof cap on it, so it's not going to harm anyone. Once I move on to my next flavor, aside from the nicotine, I'm going to zero out my scale, which I just did. I'm going to do a 10 gram ripe strawberry drop right now okay I got my 10 grams in there that's a fast pour now you can use a syringe if you have a you know if you have a, a smaller bottle it's easier bigger bottles a little bit of a pain in the butt to maneuver around but I got my 10 grams of strawberry ripe flavoring. Now I'm going to move over into the whipped cream flavor. I'm going to put five grams. There goes five grams. It's actually 5.5 grams. And it's okay if you're a little over it's all right it's not a problem. I'm going to zero that out. And this is going to be, you know what, instead of 2.5, I'm going to make this one 4, and I'll use the, I'll use probably 1 gram of Bavarian cream. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put 4 of the sweet strawberry. So it's going to be 4 grams of sweet strawberry. I'm using the syringe for this. Because I feel like I can get more accurate with the syringe on these lower grams. Okay, now that's four grams. Put the rest inside the, ju the flavor bottle. And now I'm going to be using just one gram of Bavarian cream. Which Bavarian cream gives it like kind of a, like a nuttier flavor. It's a little bit more richer of a flavor. 
So I'm going to put one gram of that. Okay. Here we go. One gram. Now the rest is going to be vegetable glycerin. Which you can buy vegetable glycerin just about anywhere online. But you want to buy it at a reputable source where you know you're going to be protected. And it's going to be a clean product. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest to fill. Which in this one, in this case, it should be, I believe, a total of... 92 grams of VG to equal out the remainder. There you go. Not bad. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put my cap on it, so let me zero this out, shut it off, put my cap on, move my scale over, I'm going to show you what I'm looking at here. Now looking in there, you see different types of swirls and so forth. And the reason why that's like that it's because the juice is not mixed. The flavor is not mixed. You cannot vape this like this. You're going to have to mix it up and let it sit for a bit. So put your cap on. Shake it. So I hope this was instructional for you guys, okay? Now I know I can get a little carried away sometimes talking about Ohm's Law or maybe Amperage or e-liquid in general, but just know and understand if you're going to be making e-liquid, please wear gloves, glasses, mouth guard, whatever. Keep Make sure your arms are covered. If you're using really extremely high levels of nicotine, uh, if you're using 100 milligram or, you know, any anywhere between 50 to 100 milligram nicotine, please wear nitrile gloves. Please protect people around you. Don't be careless and make e-liquid in your bed when you wake up in the morning. You know, do it on a table with no obstacles in a way that you could bump into or make a mess or put other people's lives in jeopardy or at risk. You know, be sensible. Do the right thing. Do the smart thing. You know, don't do it in your car. Don't do it at work. Don't do it around others. Do it in an environment where you're closed off from the world and you've got a nice big open table or big open space all to yourself with no one around you. And when you store your flavors and your nicotine and your vegetable glycerin, keep it out of reach of children. Just be smart about it. We don't need another episode in, in the news about somebody who carelessly did something. You know, we, we, we don't need that. You know, vaping industry does not need that. You don't need that. Okay. Now in the coil building portion of this video, a lot of people are just like, well, you know what? I don't need to learn how to build coils, blah, blah, blah. I buy my coils online. I get them from China. I get them from here. I get them from there. Well, sooner or later, there's going to be a pandemic with this coronavirus thing going on. And that's not a conspiracy theory. That's just honestly the truth. And, um, you know, we get majority of our product from China, which right now China is the bulk leader in this coronavirus pandemic. So um, I don't know if it's eating the three squeaks where people are eating live mice babies, or I don't know if it's, uh, you know, people eating, you know, bats for bat soup. I don't know. All these urban legends are now becoming about, you know, yeah, China does have a very strange food industry where they eat very strange food products, but who doesn't? Over here in the States, we eat extremely hot, you know, ghost chili peppers where people vomit and their eyes swell and their body gets the uh, sweats and they start heating up and they get you know, uh, heartburn and indigestion. So we're just as crazy as they are in China. Okay. And you know, what was that whole freaking Tide Pod challenge? People eating Tide Pods. That was the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. But kids are out there putting Tide Pods in their mouth and biting into them and seeing if they could withstand it, which is just so stupid. It's just so dumb. So Pre-made coils, you can get them from China, and this is a set of pre-made coils right here. There's about a hundred pre-made alien coils in here. I paid $12 for it. 
Do I feel confident in this product? No. I don't know where the metal is made from. I don't know what it's made of. Uh, it says it's 316L stainless steel. I know in China they make them on huge machines and factories, and factories are just pushing out coils all day long. I do know, however, China doesn't really have a great smelting plan for metals and so forth, so what they do is they buy our mixed metals and all of our recycled metals. They send people here in the States, they tour around to all the scrap yards, and all they do for a living is buy our mixed and shitty metals, okay? And they bring it back to China and they make products with it. That's why Chinese products sometimes isn't of the highest quality. That's why a lot of stuff that's American made, American made steel, American made naval brass, American made copper, all those products sometimes they cost more money because it, the raw materials cost money, you know, authentic versus Chinese, you know, authentic. So all in all, you know, you can buy these, just know and understand. You don't know where the metal is made of. You don't know what it's made of. You don't know what the mix of metal is. They say it's 316L stainless steel, but I don't really truly buy it. And the reason why I say that is because when I got these coils, I paid $12 for 400 coils. 12 bucks for 400 coils. And they're all aliens. Now this is a last ditch scenario, last case scenario. If my hands break or my finger uh, happens, some, something happens to my finger and I can't make coils, I'll just use these. But I don't feel confident that they're clean and I don't feel confident that they were made by hand and I don't feel confident they were made of good materials. When you buy coils from let's say Twisted Messes or Squidode or Omboy or M-Turk or coil turd or you know anybody out there anybody who's making coils you know whether it's you know there's warthog coils i buy coils from warthog there's uh the yeti the the yeti vapor he makes amazing coils now all these guys use high quality wires most of them 99.9% .9 of them use wire that's sold by twisted messes and Twisted Messes, before he got into the wire distribution business, he made sure that it's coming from a clean source of clean properties and the wire consists and is made of exactly what it says it's made of. So if it says it's stainless steel, it's stainless steel. That's why you pay more. That's why you get good stuff for quality stuff for quality prices. Now, they'll be a little bit higher than the average Chinese company that makes spools like this. In some cases, some coil builders out there sell just a pair of coils, just two coils. They'll sell them for anywhere from $12 to just $36. bucks. i have seen them up to $42, some coil builders charging. Just know and understand, they're spending money on quality products, so you have a safe product to vape. And they just want you to, you know, be aware and assured that the product you just spent your hard money on is a good product and it's going to last and it's not going to harm you. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So DIY e-liquid, very, very important for the states that have uh, laws banning e-liquids and vaping products and so forth. So it's very nice, and very good to know about DIY e-liquid. DIY uh, coil building, it's good to know to do just for yourself, just for your own self, in case you are unable to get pre-made coils or buy them online from anywhere, at least you know you can make them at home and it doesn't take a whole lot of technological advancement to understand how to straighten out a wire, how to put a, uh, a wire spool with a Beetalon elastic tamer on it. That's what it's called, that little elastic band. It's called a Beetalon tamer. It's a wire tamer. It prevents the wire from unspooling on the actual spool itself. And then it just gets fed through that little hole. So it'll just wrap itself around the wire all by itself on its own. And that's great. And last but not least, Ohm's Law. Ohm's law is the most important thing in the vaping industry. The most important thing. It revolves around battery safety. It, re it revolves around your safety in general. So having a good understanding or having knowledge of Ohm's law is pretty important. Okay, now you can download an Ohm's law calculator to your cell phone. They have them on the App Store or the Google Play Store. You could download an Ohm's law calculator. They have them where they're just calculating voltage, current, and resistance. Uh, so you could do that or you can get them to represent wattage, you know, whatever you want. You could download them. They have them out there. If not, they're online and you can find them online. I hope this video was helpful. I know it was long and I know probably a good 90% of you didn't watch it all the way through, but 
I appreciate the time and I appreciate your patience and I appreciate you guys willing to come to my channel and watch my video and get a little knowledge on understanding how Ohm's Law, DIY e-liquid and DIY coil building goes from my point of view and perspective. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully I have helped some people continue to vape on their own through the years to come. You have a good day, YouTube. Bye-bye.